Are you a photographer looking to get started in portraits? Well, these are three must-have lenses. All right, everybody, so as a portrait photographer, as a photographer in general, we all know that there is an endless supply of lenses and focal lengths and speeds, but what do you really need to get started? So in this video, we're gonna talk about three lenses that I think are essential, crucial, to getting started as a portrait photographer. Actually, one of the things you have to consider is focal length. So focal length will change the way a portrait looks, right? So if you were to shoot your subject with a fisheye lens, that's gonna look completely different than if you were to photograph them with, let's say, a 400 millimeter lens. Now, of course, those lenses are on the extremes, but you get my point. And so it's very important to understand that these three lenses are really good for faces. Right, so we don't want to skew features like nose, ears, eyes, but to that point, maybe you do, right? So in commercial photography, you'll see them do things like super wide angle lenses. They make you know a subject's foot look super big or their legs or bodies look elongated. Those are more niche types of shoots, but in general for portraits, you don't want to exaggerate your subject's uh, features. And that's why I like these three lenses. And so the other thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is of course, the speed of the lens. And when somebody's talking about speed of your lens, that's your aperture, your f-stop. Is that 1.2 or is that gonna be a variable, which is like f4 to f5.6, right? Meaning if you're wider, it's one speed. If you zoom in, it's another speed. Quite frankly, uh, I would encourage you to spend as much money as you possibly can on your lenses because your lenses will last, right? Cameras every year, every six months, there's new megapixels, more megapixels, too many megapixels. And so with a lens, that's gonna move with you from camera body to camera body. So buy as much glass as you can afford. I use a 50 millimeter, that's the first lens we're gonna talk about. I use an F1.2, it's an RF lens from Canon. Now, that's an expensive lens. The alternative of that is an F1.8. Almost every manufacturer has it, third party companies like Tamron and Sigma, they make those lenses as well for most camera bodies. That's a great place to start. It's an inexpensive lens. But what you're gonna see are the results, right? So 50 millimeter is more on the wider side of what I'd recommend for uh, portraits. So it's a great lens. You'll be able to get mid-length portraits, kind of waist up. Uh, you can get tight, but if you get too close, it's gonna change the way it looks. And if you want full body, you've gotta back up, right? So your feet are acting as the zoom, but the nifty 50, as we like to call it sometimes, it's a great all around, all purpose lens, uh, especially for portraits. Now the second lens up, I would consider this a classic portrait lens. It's the 85 millimeter F1.2 or F1.8. Either one is gonna give you some really good results. Now, the reason this is a classic portrait lens is because of it's going to give you a little bit of compression, but it allows you to kind of work at a reasonable distance from your subject, right? So for a 50 millimeter, you've gotta be a little bit closer to your subject. Sometimes, right, it's, a, it's a just a little awkward. It's tension that's not needed. 85 millimeter allows you to be a nice distance, but still get this compressed kind of portrait, a nice beauty headshot, whether you're going vertical or horizontal, uh, and the results are just stunning. When I'm in studio, the 85 millimeter is my number one portrait lens that I love to use uh, in studio, because in most spaces, you've got enough room to be about four or five feet from your subject and get a nice lens. Now, of course, if you want full body, 85 millimeter is not gonna give you what you're looking for because you've gotta really move uh, far back where maybe a 50 millimeter would be more appropriate for that situation. But as far as results go, 85 millimeter at 1.2 or 1.8, what you're gonna notice is the eyes will be sharp. If they're not, then you might have an equipment problem, but that's a conversation for another day. And the skin will start getting a little bit soft, right? And that's mostly because of the optics. It's gonna soften that skin. You want that. You want softer looking skin. The average person wants to have a, they want to have good looking skin, right? And so that in combination with the way you light your subject can really have a pleasing effect on the skin, right? Your bouquet, uh, bouquet, bokeh, whatever you decide to call it, your shallow depth of field, that's going to have a really pleasing effect, right? And the 85 millimeter one, two, mm, chef's kiss, as my wife likes to say all the time. Now, something to keep in mind is that both the previous lenses I've mentioned, the 50 and the 85, those are primes. Uh, they have less glass in them. They are much sharper. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, when possible, primes are the way to go. You are gonna get the sharpest image you possibly can when it, from an optical perspective, because in a zoom lens, 
There's more movement, there's more mechanics in the lens, more places for things to get to go wrong on you. And so that leads us to our third lens, right? And this one is a uh, kind of a telezoom lens. It's a 7200 f2.8. And this is another lens that when I'm on location outdoors and I've got more room to move, 7200 can absolutely provide incredible results for you. And the reason for that is, is you've got this range, right? 70 to 200. But the key here is f2.8 throughout the range. I would never recommend to you as an up and coming portrait photographer, do not waste your money buying a 7200 variable uh, lens, meaning f4 to f5.6, because what that's ha what's happening there is at 70 millimeters, you're going to get uh, you know 4.0, but at 200 millimeters, it's gonna be f5.6, and you don't want that. That's not what you want. It's not gonna give you consistent results. It's not gonna give you the depth of field you're looking for. Save your money, invest in the right piece of glass. I could not, I cannot advise you enough on this. That particular lens, invest in the f2.8. And what you're gonna notice here is you can get really close to your subject from a distance. And when it comes to portrait photography specifically, you're going to be able to create some portraits that are just absolutely stunning with compression there. So it's gonna be really sharp, background's gonna be pulled into your subject, and they're just gonna have this magical look to them. And a lot of times when you look at other photographers' work, you can't figure out like, how are they doing this? A lot of times it's the optics they've chosen. It's not always Photoshop, right? It's not always just magic what they're doing. A lot of times, if you shoot a portrait at 85 millimeter 1.2, f1.2, that's gonna look completely different than using a 7200 lens, shooting that at 85, right? Zooming into 85 and shooting that at 2.8. So even though both are the same focal length, because one's a prime and one's faster, that is going to look completely different than a telezoom with a f2.8, right? Because there's a good stop and a half, two stops difference sometimes between these lenses. So I hope this makes sense. I hope the results make sense uh, for you and you like what you see. If you're enjoying this video and wanna learn more about photography, like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you in the next video.